Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle with Treble Health, and today I'm going to be reviewing otosclerosis. So I'm going to start off by describing what otosclerosis is, some of the symptoms and causes of the disease, then I'll go into some of the diagnostic workup that determines whether or not someone has otosclerosis, and then we'll finish off with some of the different treatment options that are available if an individual has otosclerosis. So otosclerosis is a disease of the ear, and it particularly affects the inner ear as well as the middle ear. So the middle ear houses the three smallest bones in our body, the incus, the malleus, and the stapes. And these collectively are known as the acicular chain. Otosclerosis affects the stapes. It affects the foot plate of the stapes, which is the bottom part of the stapes that makes contact with the oval window, which is an opening that helps to connect both the middle ear to the inner ear. Stapes is also the smallest bone in our body. So like I said previously, that the acicular chain houses the three smallest bones in our body. The stapes is even smaller than the incus and the malleus. And if you remember from anatomy class in elementary school, this is what we commonly called the stirrup in the ear. Normally, the stapes can move in and out of the oval window, and it responds to movements of the eardrum as well as the other parts of the acicular chain to help transfer sounds from the outer ear to the middle ear and to the inner ear. So it's really important that it can move properly in order for us to be able to hear properly. If there is bony overgrowth in the stapes and there starts to be more fixation where the stapes isn't as able to move in and out of the oval window, this starts to impede one's ability to hear. Otosclerosis usually starts off in one ear, but then it does end up being more common that an individual will have otosclerosis in both of their ears. So therefore they may have hearing loss in both of their ears. It's believed that there is some genetic or hereditary component to otosclerosis, but not everybody has a genetic tie into otosclerosis. So some individuals will report, oh yes, my mother, my father, or my aunt also seem to have the same type of hearing loss whereas other individuals won't have any genetic components, but it may be related to autoimmune disease, hormonal changes like pregnancy, or any kind of viral infections that they may have had that could have caused the start of otosclerosis. So what are some of the common symptoms of otosclerosis? Some of the common symptoms include, of course, hearing loss, as well as oral fullness or ear fullness or pressure sensation in the ears, as well as dizziness and tinnitus. So tinnitus is another one of the common findings that individuals with otosclerosis may have. But not all individuals will have all of these symptoms. So when I used to work at NYU, I used to see a lot of patients with otosclerosis. Some did end up having treatment, so surgical treatment intervention. Others may not have done anything other than getting hearing aids to help with the hearing loss. And some individuals had all four of these symptoms, and some individuals would only have hearing loss as well as some um, ear fullness. Others did end up having all four, the dizziness, ear fullness, hearing loss, and tinnitus. So it's absolutely not necessary to have all of them, but see, these are some of the more common symptoms that someone with otosclerosis will have. The type of hearing loss that someone with otosclerosis usually has is called conductive hearing loss, meaning that their hearing is impaired by the transmission of sound as it progresses from the outer and middle ear to the inner ear, but their auditory nerve and inner ear are functioning normally. So it's essentially like a loss of volume that they are experiencing. And this is what is usually easily treated through hearing aids. So some individuals will just opt to get hearing aids to help improve their hearing as opposed to having surgical intervention. But I'll go into that a little bit later. So typically someone will have the conductive hearing loss at all or most of their hearing frequencies. And sometimes they have something called Carhartt's notch. This is really like a telltale sign that someone has otosclerosis. Carhartt's notch is when someone has conductive hearing loss at all frequencies, except for usually around 2000 Hertz, where it dips down and now the hearing loss that they have appears to be sensory neural. The sensation of ear pressure or fullness, oral fullness, is usually the result of the decreased hearing that the individual has. And so oftentimes someone will feel like they do have a clogged ear on the side that they have otosclerosis, but again, it's usually just the drop in volume and their ability to hear that makes them perceive as though they have some kind of pressure build up in their ear. And they usually, since they only have, start off having otosclerosis in one ear, will be able to tell the significant difference between how one ear feels versus the other. Dizziness is again, another one of the common symptoms, although much less common than that of hearing loss, fullness, 
or tinnitus. The reasoning behind why some individuals experience dizziness is because otosclerosis can ultimately also affect how the inner ear is functioning. And the inner ear is responsible for both our hearing and balance. And lastly, tinnitus is another common symptom of otosclerosis. And we believe that that's because of the hearing loss that an individual is having as a result of the otosclerosis. So because their auditory system is receiving less auditory input, they might start to experience overactive firing of the auditory nerve fibers, which then can result in symptoms or in the overall perception of tinnitus. This is a short break from today's video to announce the Tinnitus Guide by Treble Health. Do you want to learn about the newest tinnitus treatments and management tips? Click the link in the description of this video to get your free copy of the Tinnitus Guide by Treble Health. It's important to note that over time, if otosclerosis is left untreated, hearing loss does tend to progress and worsen, and an individual's overall ability to hear will therefore decline. So initially in the beginning, they may not notice much of a difference or any kind of difference at all between how one ear hears versus the other. But with some time, their hearing will start to decline further and further in the ear that they have otosclerosis, and they might start to actually then notice that they're having greater difficulty hearing, and some of the symptoms of ear fullness as well as tinnitus start to become more pronounced. How is otosclerosis diagnosed? So typically, it is diagnosed after an individual has had an audiological workup. So they've had a hearing test that showed clear signs of a conductive hearing loss and that possible Carhartt's not sensory neural hearing loss around 2000 Hertz. Outside of the hearing test, an individual may have tympanometric testing or tympanometry or emittance testing. And this helps to assess how the middle ear is functioning and how the eardrum moves. So with someone who has otosclerosis, because the bony overgrowth on the stapes isn't allowing the stapes to move as easily in and out of that oval window, it may not allow the eardrum to move enough with those different pressure changes. So there could also be signs on that middle ear test that give the impression that someone has otosclerosis. And they may also then be referred to imaging studies, particularly a CT scan, which will be able to show whether or not there's abnormal bony growth of the stapes. So along with the audiological testing and the imaging studies that are done, an individual will be easily diagnosed with or without otosclerosis. So what are the treatment options that are available for otosclerosis? There are several treatment options, including both surgical intervention, audiological intervention, and simply just monitoring and waiting and seeing whether or not the hearing loss seems to progress or the symptoms seem to progress if otosclerosis worsens. So definitely there are several individuals who decide they're just going to monitor their otosclerosis by having an annual hearing test and evaluating whether or not their symptoms of hearing loss, ear fullness, tinnitus, dizziness worsen over time. If they start to notice that they're having greater degrees of hearing loss, then they may start to look into either surgical intervention or audiological intervention. So the surgical intervention is formally called a stapedectomy. And this is where the stapes is actually replaced. So the stapes bone gets replaced with the prosthetic stapes, which is usually made out of either titanium, stainless steel, or even plastic. And this helps to return the normal function of the osticular chain so that it can move easily in and out against the eardrum and the oval window. And it usually results in improved hearing and improved sensations of ear fullness as well as tinnitus and dizziness. But some individuals, as a result of having stapedectomy, may still be left with some degree of hearing loss. So some of those conductive hearing loss components that they had prior to the stapedectomy may have improved or at least partially improved, but sometimes individuals are left with some degree of high frequency sensory neural hearing loss. And this is the result of the fact that the middle ear space is very, very small. The stapes is very, very small. It's a very delicate and tiny space that these surgeons have to work with. And sometimes there can be some damage that's done to part of the auditory system, you know, because they're trying to improve another part of the auditory system. So there are some risk factors. It's not entirely foolproof. But with a really good surgeon, you're likely to have very good outcomes from a stapedectomy. And again, when I was working at NYU, I would regularly see individuals with otosclerosis who were treated with stapedectomies. 
we had um, great surgeons and they oftentimes did really great job at improving the individual's hearing with very little to no um, hearing loss as a result of the stapedectomy, meaning like their hearing loss that they had came back up and they didn't have any residual hearing loss as a result of the surgery. Um, sometimes though, the surgery again doesn't result in a full bounce back of their hearing. So individuals will hear better, but albeit not entirely back to normal. So many individuals will choose to just get hearing aids or bone conduction devices that help improve their hearing after they've had a stapedectomy or if they've decided not to have a stapedectomy and just wanted to have the hearing loss treated. And for the individuals who had tinnitus as a result of otosclerosis, oftentimes having improved hearing or having the ability to have sound therapy built into their hearing devices has helped tremendously with their overall perception of tinnitus. Some individuals, because of otosclerosis or because of a failed stapedectomy, may be left with a very severe or even profound hearing loss. So in those extreme cases where a hearing aid or bone conduction hearing device wouldn't be sufficient, these individuals could still make use of cochlear implants. So sometimes cochlear implants are even used as options to help treat individuals with otosclerosis. And sometimes cochlear implants can also help improve some symptoms of tinnitus in individuals who have it. Because again, they're having more access to sound. Their auditory system doesn't need to try to self-stimulate where it can't hear any longer. And now it can hear more of the external sounds and therefore produces less of the tinnitus sound. So if you have otosclerosis, it's important to follow through with your audiologist, your otolaryngologist to determine what are the best treatment options that are available for you. And if you suspect that you may have otosclerosis, then the first step is definitely to follow up with an audiologist to have your hearing tested, as well as an otolaryngologist to have possible imaging studies conducted to really determine whether or not you have otosclerosis. If you have had otosclerosis or know someone that has, Feel free to comment below and if you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to comment below. We're happy to answer any questions that you may have about otosclerosis or tinnitus. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe, hit subscribe, and if you like this video, hit the like button and we hope you found this video very helpful. Thank you so much.